Is gold crashing? We're, we're headed back down, Nick. Everybody's worried. The nuclear working group, there's whispers. Those whispers just became a little bit louder. We'll talk market correction. We're going to talk liberty and safety. We're going to talk the Trumpster, frankly. He wants to nuke hurricanes. He's pissed off that people called him out on his Alabama comment. Um, we're going to talk about the Pentagon paying for the wall. Naughty, naughty, Mr. Trump. I could have swore that Mexico was supposed to pay for that thing. A lot going on. Let's get to it. I am Gerardo Del Real along with my co-host, Mr. Nick Hodge. This is episode 35 of Bizarro World. And man, what a bizarro world it is. Nick, how the heck are you doing this Friday? I'm doing very good, Gerardo, as I typically am. There was some bizarre news stories this week involving Sharpies in Alabama and uh, nuclear weapons and hurricanes, as you said. Excited to talk about it. I'm home with the kids. I'm sitting in the back seat of my pickup truck for a little <laughs> bit of quiet. Sounds like a country I song. Hope the, <laughs> I, I, hope, I hope the internet holds up. Sitting in the back of my pickup truck, recording bizarre world because I don't give up. up. Anyway, all right, let's talk markets, man. Let's get right to it. Um, gold closed. L- 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 <laughs> Lil, Nas- Lil Nas X was many episodes ago. Lil Nas X was many episodes ago, and he is no longer number one on all the charts. So we'll, we'll, we'll flush that out a little bit at a time. Let's talk markets. Gold pulled back. I, 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 I said it would happen here in the second half of September. It, it got a, you know, it, I was off by a week, boo-hoo, but it, it definitely pulled back. That was expected. It's down to 1505. We talked about the fact when it hit 1400 that I thought it would go to 14. 14- 1550, I should say, and maybe test 1585, and that we needed to test 1585 and break that if it was going to continue higher. That did not happen. So I think the pullback to 1505 as we speak is anticipated by a lot of people. Um, I don't think what, what, what I don't think is anticipated, Nick, is I don't think people expect that it's going to pull back down to the 1400. But look, I'm not a gold bug. I believe in gold as a hedge. I believe in the monetary value of gold. I believe um, in it in a lot of different ways, but I'm not one of these people that just cheer gold on regardless of what's going on. And the bottom line is, I think gold has a very good chance of pulling back all the way down to that $1,400 level. Um, With that being said, if 1400 is the new floor, I will be buying everything in sight in the month of September um, if we see some of the selling that we started to see yesterday continue today. Thoughts on the gold market? I'm not a technician. It looks like there's a bit of resistance or support, however you want to call that, at the 1500 level Um, right about where we're doing battle, it looks like, today in the gold market. Um, If it breaks down through the 1500 level, my rudimentary understanding of technicals does show the support somewhere 1386 to 1420 in that range somewhere, you know, where it it falls, no one knows. But there is strong support there. And and again, looking at the chart, just like you said, that's still firmly bull market intact, a healthy little... um, pull back or sell off again, however you want to phrase that. But just looking at a one year chart, a pullback to 1400 still makes the chart look really good to me. I'm excited about where we're at Um, a bit of a broken record repeat for me in that, um, the excitement still isn't quite there for the, the smaller quality names, but, um, have seen some some good price pop reactions to to news releases. One of which I sent you yesterday in <laughs> Compass Gold, which was a name I mentioned um, on the podcast a week or two ago as an as a name to keep an eye on. And sure enough, drill results: the stock was up some thirty or thirty five percent yesterday. But then checked in this morning, and those gains were immediately gone. So. Um, not a sustainable power upward move yet in the in the smaller names, but they are clearly getting attention. Um, I think you have some people that may be stuck in these names for a long time that are using these early flashes of liquidity and upper price movement to to maybe either take their gains or or, or get out with their with their nose just above water and and looking for better opportunities. As I know, people like you and I are, for example, we both sent out new recommendations in the past two weeks to our main newsletters that were in the gold space and so we're clearly excited about um, where we're at in the market and continue to get positioned and I'm going to keep going sorry Um, I still don't know where the broad market is going yet right Um, 
I'll invoke Mr. Dines again. I was reading his issue. I was sitting in the hospital with my wife yesterday that came out in late August, and um, we're on sort of the same page. Um, I still haven't put those retirement funds back to work keeping dry powder because I don't see um, necessarily a crystal clear catalyst to the upside or downside. Um, I could make an argument, I think, for both why I think U.S. equities could break out higher um, you know, based on consumer things and some sound jobs numbers that we got today. And I could make a case for the downside based on um, debt and uh, the fact that earnings haven't been there and, and buybacks have kept stocks propped up and index funds and things like that. And so um, still waiting to see which way the market goes. But one thing is clear that gold remains strong. And that's a function of the bond stuff that we've talked about for weeks on end. Right. Um, uh, global investors, I think, are starting to realize that whole thing. Like, well, why am I why am I paying uh, to to put my money somewhere supposedly safe when gold does the same thing and doesn't charge a fee? And so, um, you know, bull market's still intact for gold uh, for for broader base equities. I'm not so sure, but I continue to hunt for signs. I like it. Yeah, and and, and you know, let's uh, let, let, let's say that I'm wrong and that and that the pullback isn't as severe and that we actually rally. We never know what's going to happen um, geopolitically or globally. Um, on the upside, I think on a monthly level, the the, the resistance looks like fifteen fifty nine, fifteen sixty. So if you see a monthly close above that in September, then I think we're really really off to the races. Um, I like your comment on Compass Gold. Uh, just for some context, guys, a couple of days ago, guys and gals, I should say, they drilled. 6.1 meters of 65.6 grams per ton gold. I'm I'm working. I'm freestyling it here off of memory, but I believe it was seven holes that they announced. All of the mineralization was near surface. All of it was high grade, and I think they hit on all seven holes that they reported on. So if I'm accurate about that, ah man, I have to wonder about the loyalty of some of these um, Compass Gold shareholders. I mean, you would think that on news like that, the last thing you would want to do with $1,500 gold is sell 2 million shares into the market the very next day. But apparently, that's what's happening. So it'll be interesting to see what happens to Compass Gold in light of a pullback if that pullback actually materializes the way that we think it will. Um, Let's pivot a little bit. Let's talk uh, uranium and let's talk about the nuclear working group when I woke up this morning there were whispers on the Twitter sphere that the White House was considering a plan that would have the government the US government directly purchase uranium from US producers um, in, in an attempt to kind of revive the domestic mining industry here in the US those whispers became much pr- much more pronounced and louder as the day went on and and you know as of as of three o'clock here Austin time on Friday it's now a Bloomberg article Article. It's official. They are absolutely um, considering that plan. And a CEO said that the president intends to take bold action. Um, we can say a lot about the Trumpster, uh, but he always takes bold action, whether it's, you know, poo pooing um, the people that give him maps or poo pooing generals or whatever it is. It's always bold, right? Any thoughts on what's coming down the pipeline? Um, I don't know. We have still uh, a month to go until I think the deadline for that working group, which was 90 days from the last Section 232 deadline. I'm unfortunately not up on the the news story that you just mentioned, although um, it sounds like a step in the direction, though, the step in the right direction, though. I wonder why we're abandoning some of the the longstanding thoughts of, you know, some sort of um, quota or, um, you know, tariff on on imports from other countries it just seems like the framework has shifted a bit though of course any action that could act as a catalyst for a bull market or that helps lift the uranium industry out of the the doldrums it's been in is is welcome can you give a bit more detail on the the news that's out today or is it just too early to 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 do that it really is too early to do that um you know it's 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 sources that didn't want to go on the record um but it seemed like they were pretty high up for it to make it um onto bloomberg with both an executive from um the 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 demand and supply side of it and and officials from the trump administration for both of them to go you know on record off the record if you want to call it that um, mm-hmm. it says to me that, that 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 there's something coming and you know it's 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 interesting we talk 
Let, let's talk politics for a little bit and kind of tie it into the business cycle and, and the way we're so selective in our confirmation bias, right? If you're a Republican, you tend to lean towards, you're supposed to lean towards letting the business cycle play out. There's boom and bust cycles. You you lift yourself up by your bootstraps. I believe in that. When it comes to farmers in this country, that hasn't been the case. And I haven't heard the screams of socialism. When it comes to the nuclear, <laughs> the, the uranium industry and the nuclear working group, that doesn't seem like that's going to be the case, letting the natural business cycle play out the way that um, a lot of people say. And then, you know, if you're on the left, you believe that the rich make way too much money for their own good and that we should spread that out. And we know that historically that never works out, right? Um, it, it just socialism doesn't work. That's a proven fact. So is what, what's the future? You and I talk about the fourth turning a lot. Is the future maybe what the past was, a, a compromise somewhere in between where we reduce wealth inequality, where you know, the, the, the rich don't have all the cards stacked in their favor, because let's be frank, um, you know, if you're making more than half a million a year, we got it pretty good. Legally, tax code wise, um, deduction wise, benefits, credit wise, it's pretty awesome to be rich. You're seeing backlash to it already, the backlash to the wealth equality that is, and just the the popularity of candidates, um, not only four years ago, but this year, like Bernie Sanders, um and elizabeth warren and you see it in um the i know you wanted to talk about facebook antitrust action today but you see it in 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 exactly that facebook was issued a a record fine a a couple of months ago and we're starting to see um blow black blowback towards these these big tech companies and including amazon where citizens of new york city and long island were like you know what we're not you make too much money we're not going to give you tax breaks to come here and set up shop and, and increase our traffic and 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 pay us maybe not so great wages to to further enrich your company and and your largest shareholders and, and founder Jeff Bezos. And so you're seeing, I think, a backlash to it in real time. I don't necessarily know what the ultimate outcome is going to be, but I'll tell you from my worldview as a libertarian, something that has grown on me in the past couple of years is this idea of UBI or a universal basic income hmm. where, um, you know, we're not necessarily holding your hand and doing everything for you and using government resources to provide you health care and education but we're giving you just x amount of dollars and saying hey this is a human money right that you can use to do those things right but if you don't use it wisely that's on you now the trick is going to be ho- holding up that that's on you end of the thing right because there's then going to be I, I can just see it coming we're giving you whatever twenty thousand dollars a year i just pulled that number out whatever the number is and people are squandering it and still want more so um you know i i don't necessarily know how that's gonna play out as far as the uh, what you speak of are government handouts or the nuclear industry that conservatives uh, don't necessarily uh, perk up against because it helps their pocketbook. And that's exactly why, right? We we talk our book and we vote our pocketbook. And if the government's going to give us a handout that helps our investments or that helps uh, a sector that we're a proponent of, then then we keep mum about it, don't we? <laughs> well said. And let's continue with this theme. You brought up Facebook and the antitrust um, litigation that now um, is 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 here. It's not just Facebook. Um, the antitrust investigation will be eight states and D.C., but it's not just Facebook. It's also Amazon. It's also Google. And, you know, my again, such a bizarre world we live in. Google, I believe, is in the midst of bidding on a $10 billion Pentagon contract. How then, how then are we to believe that the attorneys generals of eight states and the District of Columbia have a fair shot at really digging and investigating into the behind the scenes, nefarious or non-nefarious actions by companies like Google, if let's say they win the contract? How do how do you reconcile one Google will be in charge of a very important sector of not just the U.S. information, you know, service, but but globally. Right. We're the world leader in this stuff. And so uh, that's on the one side. And on the other, I'm supposed to believe that states attorneys generals are going to be able to fairly investigate people. It's kind of like all the opioid settlements, all these companies. Nobody's really going to prison. Everybody's just paying a fine. We got the the, the thing today from U.S. Gymnastics. Um, they're just going to pay a fine for allowing all these little girls to get raped and molested. 
while under mm-hmm. their care. And nobody goes to prison. And so I think, you know, tying it all back in, back to your point with the fourth turning, more and more and more, all of our major institutions are just full of shit. And I think that it's 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 gonna come it, it's gonna come to a point where people aren't just talking about it on a podcast. And unfortunately we know that all turnings historically, you know, have violence associated with them. Um, and I'm not advocating that, but I'm definitely advocating protest and, and, and getting more vocal with your local and state politicians or whoever you have access to, because it can't continue to be this way. We can't continue to hold kids and migrant centers indefinitely charge the state and taxpayers like myself $700 a day, then not give these kids a fucking toothbrush. We can't continue to let our little girls go on a gymnastics, um, you know, trip, state spots, uh, school sponsored state meets. And then turns out that for years and years and years, the doctor that was overseeing us gymnastics was raping and molesting these girls. And at the end of the day, all that happens is a fine. We can't let our pharmaceutical companies know exactly where every pill, addictive pill, is going in America. And then when they get caught, they get a fine. That's a fraction of the profits that they made. It's just disgusting. And the same way, I mean, just taking it right back to Facebook, the same way you can't let somebody hoover up somebody's intimate data about their lives and, 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 and sell it to advertisers who then target them with specific things. I mean, um, and, and make serious, serious profits off of it. Um, while not employing that many people, because, you know, it's back to like the oligarch days, right. Where these big tech companies, it's concentrated. The profits are right at the top and, uh, they're not paying their workers anything. There was a story a couple of weeks ago. I wanted to talk on the, about on the podcast and I don't think we get got to it where it came out that Uber and Lyft were paying their drivers much less than they were reporting in their filings and on down the line. And if you want to take it to markets, then you get the the banks who peddle these stocks to people, right? Uber stock IPOs. And, uh, you know, Uber Eats loses three and a half dollars for every meal they drop off. And these companies aren't profitable. And the uh, Pandora, who's never made money, or I could keep going. And now this week you have WeWork, right? Where not only is the the CEO a fucking scumbag who has, mm. you know, in yeah. some cases bought bought the buildings and is leasing them back to his his company. Hmm. Um, they they got to cut their valuation in half. And so, um, <laughs> you know, from from soup to nuts, from the way companies are treating their customers to the implications that has on the economy to how the institutions are are managing our youth or, or mismanaging our youth and, and never held accountable. Um, a lot of that is going to change and, and is changing. And and if I could just go on for another second, you're starting to see it with um, the candidates that are emerging mm. and the people who, who are retiring. There was another conservative Texas congressman this week who said he wasn't running for reelection. And yep. so Democrats are getting excited about their their chances of, of taking some seats in Texas. And that's all part of it. Right. Absolutely agree. And I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to extend this conversation a little further because it, it, you mentioned the politicians that, you know, either either don't want anything to do with this because they see where it's headed or they actually want to be a part of the change, whether you agree with them or not. Two examples. One, Howard Schultz today decided he's out of there. He said, look, he, he basically said the Internet's full of assholes and you guys didn't even wait to listen to any of my proposals before you started calling me out for bullshit. So, you know what? You get the politicians you deserve. On the other end of it, you know, we had another mass shooting in Odessa here in Texas again. Um, again, you know the profile, mid-30s, white dude. You know, usually it's younger uh, and, and white dudes for the most part. There was one that was a younger African-American kid that shot up his high school, shot up 10 students. That didn't get a lot of press. But it seems like the press and the politicians and the constituents all cling to whatever is beneficial to their worldview. And I'm telling you people, we, we can no longer continue to function as a society that way. We have to deal in facts. My last point is the sensitivity of the media. They asked Beto O'Rourke this week, what do, you, what, what do you think of the motivation of the shooter? And this was, you know, maybe a couple of hours after it happened. And he said, we don't know, yet know what the motivation is. But what we do know is this is fucked up. And the more delicate flowers amongst us decided that, oh, my God, he used the F word. That garnered more outrage than the fact that we have another mass shooting um, of somebody that got fired, went home, got his assault rifle, loaded up, and just randomly started shooting at people. A couple um, from the community that I live in here just outside of Austin and Pflugerville in Round Rock, Texas. So, you know, it's uh, 
It's a turning, folks, whether you know it or not. Things are definitely changing. This is the process. It's not a fun process. There's always casualties. And, you know, hopefully we see the light before it gets too dark, right? Well, it's so interesting how you see the the media handle that and, and, and not and not show it for for what it is, right? He's making a valid point. Clearly the shootings are more fucked up than someone using the F word, but they either don't get it, they don't want to get it, or they're paid not to get it. Whatever it is, it's also fucked up. And I can tie it back to the markets for you again. It's like we were talking about last week with the guy from Bloomberg and his pseudo intellectualism trying to defend negative rates and why that's a good idea. Um, it's like in no in no grounded reality is negative rates a good idea. Like you got interest rates at the lowest they've ever been in history since Julius Caesar times. Like um, <laughs> we know how that di- ended. <laughs> <laughs> to, to, to put it in Dine's ter- right, like to put it in Dine's terms, it's like this this bond stuff that's going on now is like the tulip stuff. It's just absolutely crazy, and you got people in the media, like uh, just like you said about a work, who don't want to talk about the shooting, but would rather talk about a work. They want they don't want to talk about the negative rates and why that's like a global systemic issue, and like how that is going to weigh on stocks and precious metals and people's savings and retirement. They want to talk about stupid shit, like why the number zero doesn't matter (laughs) (laughs) this will not end well everyone but there will be a way to profit from it as there always is um one more thing sorry no no fire away you talk about people stepping up that want to be part of the solution and people bowing out like Howard Saltz. Well, just look at the, of all places, I did not expect this week for the Walmart CEO mm. to do what he did and say what he said. Um, Walmart, Jesus Christ, the, the bastion of Arkansas and down home feel good buy a shotgun for fifty seven ninety seven <laughs> over the counter. I mean, they stopped selling handgun ammunition, AR ammunition. And oh, by the way, please don't carry your gun into our store anymore. And also, oh, by the way, Congress and administration, why don't you step up and do something? That's the CEO of Walmart saying that. And so things are happening. I like it. Um, You mentioning the CEO telling Congress to step up is very, there are a lot of parallels. It's very similar to the failure of politicians to navigate what has been a boom in the U.S. economy for the past several decades, with the exception, of course, of the financial crisis in 2008. I I, I genuinely feel bad for Janet Yellen, the previous Fed chair, and Mr. Jerome Powell, because they have been dealt the hand of the stupidest fucking politicians that I believe we've had in quite some time, collectively, both sides. Um, <laughs> the fact that, the, that that rates got cut to where they got cut and that we did so little, everybody should get voted out of office and we should start brand new. It's, 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 it should be criminal, the lack of activity, because these guys can't, these guys and gals can't talk to each other in a, in a civil way. Our infrastructure is crumbling. Mental health, the way we deal with that here in this country is absolute trash. We can't agree on a process for how to own assault rifles and handguns and do it in a way that's intelligent. Because guess what, folks? It's not that hard. There are good ways to maintain the integrity of the Second Amendment and also make sure that we at least put up some speed bumps and roadblocks for the crazies among us. So it's a... It's, it's, it's a crazy time. It's a bizarre world. The, the name of this podcast is that for exactly this reason. I think we're going to be able to ride this bizarre world wave out for another good five to 10 years. And then hopefully we'll have to change the, the, the name of it, right? I'm wondering if the president can just take a Sharpie and re-invert the yield curve, like draw the line of the yield curve the other way, because <laughs> it seems to work for hurricanes. Hey, man, the Trumpster's on it. Um, In a funny, not funny story, because this guy's the leader of the free world, during a hurricane briefing at the White House, and and, and obviously condolences to everybody in the Bahamas, everybody in in, in the path of of the hurricane, and and that's still hitting the Carolinas as we speak. Um, Don't mean to make light of that, but... You know, on the other end of it, during a hurricane briefing at the White House, (laughs) the Trumpster actually said he had an epiphany. He said, I got it. I got it. Why don't we nuke them? 
And everybody looked at him kind of confused. And he said, they start forming off the coast of Africa as they're moving across the Atlantic. We drop a bomb inside the eye of the hurricane and it disrupts it. Why can't we do that? These are, these are real quotes um, from the guy that's running and is in charge pretty much of the free world. So uh, apparently he's asked about this multiple times. No, I think he watched the video of the guy in Florida. Did you see the video of the guy in yes. Florida, Gerardo? We'll, yes. we'll have to post it. Who was saying, why can't we take, we've got an Air Force. Why can't we take some jets and fly them in the opposite direction around the hurricane and make it spin the other way? He was saying the same thing. I think, I think Trump must have seen the video. This is the very serious part about it. The part that worries me is that the next thing in the report was that nobody, that, that what the response to him was, we'll look into that President Trump. And so if this is going to be the response from the people around him that are supposed to be advising him on something as basic and ridiculous as this idea, man, it's going to be a crazy four more years. Because guess what? I think President Trump will be your president once again. I don't, I, don't, I don't see the candidate yet that's going to beat him. And there's like 27 motherfuckers running for it. Well, we got 10 people who are going to take the stage all at the same time, as I understand it. Next week, I think it is, for the next round of Democratic debates. Um, the two young folks that we've talked about on this podcast, or at least I have, um, uh, Mayor Pete Buttigieg and Andrew Yang, are in the mix. And so unless you see some crystallization around one of those two gentlemen, as I've said before, I agree with you. Uh, Mr. Trump is... Uh, A two-termer. A a two-termer con man, because, of course, you know, his first presidency was largely won on stoking the rights, you know, xenophobia. Let's let's be real and honest about that, right? Um, Who's going to pay for it? They're going to pay for it. Of course, referring to the fact that we're going to build a wall and, and this is going to be paid for by Mexico. And we'll show them there. And he said, I think, you know, Mexico will even thank him. They'll be so happy to pay for this wall. So now, you know, on Wednesday, the Pentagon said that it would pull funding from 127 Defense Department projects, including schools and daycare centers for military families, diverting three point six billion dollars to fund the wall. That's what got me the schools. Um, you know, politicians renege on their promises all the time uh, from both sides of the aisle for for stupid things. You know, I remember being mad at uh, the second Bush for for cutting bills that had to do with child health care. And I remember being mad at Obama for keeping Guantanamo open and continuing to bomb Middle Eastern nations. And, yep. um, you know, pick your poison. Right. There's always going to be a, a large section of the population who are upset with what the the president said on the election trail versus what he's doing but some of this stuff is is human rights stuff is human trampling stuff is is unconstitutional and and at the same time um, people are willing to stomach that for whatever reason, right? For maybe some of the stuff that we talked about earlier with yes. the nuclear fuel work, working group. I know at least in in mining circles, we're happy to have Mr. Trump at the helm and roll back EPA regulations and and help get mines accru- uh, approved and, and permitted more speedily. We're happy to to take a tax cut. We're happy to whatever it is on the business side. And so we vote with our wallets, right? And um, for, many, for many people, it's long been said that you know we're fiscally conservative and we're socially liberal well trump doesn't fit into that socially liberal thing at all this guy's a monster but if we're voting with our wallets which i think ultimately wins out then you pull the lever for for trump and i've heard a lot of people admit that to me over a beer i've heard a lot of people admit that to me one-on-one you don't see anybody writing op-ed pieces about that you know, it's interesting to me that, that we say that, that Trump personally is not, you know, a, a, a liberal when everything in his background says that's exactly the case. This is a gentleman whose kids were mothered by immigrants, whose parents and grandparents were immigrants. This is a guy who's been divorced three times. This is a guy who paid for sex, no judgment, just the fact, right? This is a guy that surrounded himself with porn stars and the likes of Jeffrey Epstein. So the, the notion, the notion that people can't see through 
his very liberal personal <laughs> like personality that he's a conservative that he is the the face of the conservative party that that politicians and constituents alike bow down to is absolutely bonkers to me it's bizarre but there's it's nothing, absolutely crazy but, th but there's nothing new under the sun gerardo remember you remember kenneth star right oh, the guy yeah. who yeah. prosecuted was on the blowjob that's right. And not only prosecuted Bill Clinton's blowjob, but really um, took the mantle of the conservative right to defend what the institution of marriage was and what a mm. conservative relationship was. But then but then check the records. Google Kenneth Starr, um, Peter Epstein, and you'll see that Kenneth Starr also de defended Mr. Epstein. And that sums up the conversation we just had very nicely again. Um a lot of hypocrisy out there. We have to start thinking for ourselves, people. Um, and I know we're doing a lot of social commentary on this one. Uh, that's just the times that we live in right now. Uh, I wasn't planning on talking about this, but let's get to it. Let's talk more hypocrisy. Uh, uh, the founder and former leader of a South Carolina faith-based conversion therapy program has come out as gay. Because of course, right? I, w <laughs> I was wondering if we'd get to this. <laughs> so this little fucker runs around... You, you know, ostracizing and, and, and humiliating and making kids feel less than and, and you know, traumatizing these kids, um, making them think that there's something wrong with them because of their sexuality. And sure enough, years later, after he makes a boatload of money, after he gets up there, you know, on the bully pulpit and just hammers down the gavel and, and passes judgment on everybody right uh, of course of course he's gay of course of keep, co keep your eyes of course open, he's, people he's gay he's not the first one you'll remember the conservative congressman i think it was tapping his foot under the stall all those years ago trying to Minnesota, solicit gay sex yeah i remember that guy yeah and so that's how it goes uh, i don't know if it's um a, a psychological thing these people were and i'm just making this up now you know raised in conservative <laughs> households where they feel ashamed and so they've got to seek a mask for it to cover up who their true selves are and that's why they are opposed to it in their in their outward and public lives i'm not sure if that plays into it the only thing i can i can hope is that um this gentleman the one that that you brought up the gay conversion therapist guy is sincere in his um, reformation, because some of the things I read that he was saying was truly some mea culpa stuff. I'm sorry. You know, this is truly damaging. This conversion therapy I've done, it is damaging and it shouldn't be done. And so hopefully that resonates. And, and that's the message that we take away. But yeah, pure fuckery on 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 covering up who you were for so long and 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 making it affect other people's lives yeah and then that's the part that gets me you know what you can hide whatever your kinks are whatever your fetish is whatever your sexual tastes are as long as it's not illegal and you're not harming children and it's consensual do you no judgments here dress how you want sleep with who you want play how you want to play play together play in a group play by yourself i don't care but don't use the high moral ground to judge and belittle and traumatize others, especially kids when they're at an age that's so vulnerable and then come out and say, hey, you know what? Me too. Ugly. It's very, it's very interesting. Yeah. And then we don't have to talk about the straight pride parade, but I know there is, there is people. <laughs> can there delicate is, flowers. Is, <laughs> I love those I guys. <laughs> but, but, but see, seriously, Gerardo, though, there's people that I consider friends, close friends who have kids in, in school. And I forget who I was talking to a couple of weeks ago, but you know, someone who I would have never expected this from was we were talking about the, the gay pride thing and they were, they were really upset about the gay pride in the schools and that they were they were hanging the flag in the school. And they and they said some of the same things as you and that, you know, I don't care who you sleep with. I you know, sleep with a man, sleep with a woman, sleep with a group, whatever. But why does and this isn't me talking, I'm talking like sure. my friend. Why does my why does my son have to go to school and be introduced to this? Why he was saying, um, how do I want to what was he saying? He was saying like. 
if my son isn't gay or doesn't think he's gay or doesn't know about gay, you're introducing him to an idea and, he, and, and making it seem okay, which obviously being gay is okay. But his argument was it makes my son think it's okay or it introduces him to something that maybe he, he wouldn't have been introduced to so soon or at such a young age. And then this was at a conversation that uh, we were having a couple beers and there was a couple other guys at the table and, and I was the only one man. Um, they were, and we talked about, this I was home a couple weeks ago. We talked about some of the opinions my friends had uh, as far as Colin Kaepernick and things. Sure. But um, everyone was against the gay pride in the schools, man. And this is this is like blue collar America, man. These aren't what I would consider, you know, hardcore Trump people, hardcore conservatives. They're just genuinely concerned about whatever the infiltration of gayness in their kids' lives. I guess is how you would say that. Yeah, it, it, and I don't know. I don't know how to answer that. That's honestly a tough one for me. I was thinking, and I was, I, I, I didn't really know how to combat that. I, I would say this: if you, in general, and, and, and it varies by by age, right? Like I believe there's a, a an appropriate age to talk about your children, to talk to your children about sexuality, and 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 you know, you you have sex ed in the schools, and and so my 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 litmus test would be this: if you are against any kind of sex education in the schools, regardless of whether it's straight, bisexual, gay, all the letters, right? Whatever it is, if you're against all of it, then that's just your personal preference and you have the, the right to opt out. And I completely get that. As a parent, you should have the right to say, hey, I don't want my kids learning this from a teacher before I get to have this conversation. But if you're only against the part that introduces the fact that different people like different people, right? Um, then, then, then that, that, that's a different thing to me. Then that, that's something else. There's something else going on there um, to me psychologically that, that, that just, I, I can't, I can't relate to. I mean, you know, I, I, I'm a straight male. Um, my brother is a gay male. Um, there's never been a scenario where I'm around a lot of gay people and go, Oh man, I think I'm feeling a little gay right now. Oh fuck. I better quit. Hanging out. <laughs> I better quit hanging out with these people. I love women. That's just what it is. I love my wife. Um, there's no scenario where like I could be talked into like being a gay guy. That's not how it works. Right. And, and, and vice versa. And so I don't know. I don't, you know, I, I, I don't know if it's a lack of education or understanding or maybe personal insecurities, no idea what it is. Um, but, but, but I do support somebody's, you know, right to say, Hey, I don't want any sex ed. Um, talk to my kid until I'm able to have the conversation so that I can frame it in the way that I think is most appropriate for my child. I I, I can absolutely get behind that. Um, but if you're for, and then here, yeah, go ahead. No, I was saying, and then here comes science this week telling us that, that, that there might be some sort of genetic mm -hmm. um, inclination to, to homosexuality, not a gay gene, but a combination of things in the genes that, that might make it, more likely, which is completely against what we've been thinking for the last whoever knows how long. So it's all very interesting to me. Sorry to cut you off. No, no, no. At the end of the day, man, you know whether you like bananas or peaches, right? <laughs> I'm a fruit guy. <laughs> you know what you like. You know what you don't like. You know when you like kale. You know when you don't. Um, there's no amount of education that can make me like kale if I didn't like kale. I happen to love kale, right? right? Um, that, that, that just is what it is. That's my opinion on it. And again, you know, it's a cool thing about America is we all have the right to that opinion and we can always agree to disagree respectfully and civilly, hopefully. Um, you know, I think people should be able to throw straight pride festivals. I think it's hilarious. You know, I think I should be able to allow to, to laugh at you. I should be allowed to laugh at you if, 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 if you think that, you know, straight males have it bad or, you know, straight white males are, are under attack in this country. I think um, I, I, I think that's laughable considering all the institutions of this country were set up, you know, mostly by straight white males. Like it's, it's, if it, if they had been set up by Mexican gay males, I guarantee you that, you know, it would be stacked against the, 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 the straight white males. That's just the way that founding a country or developing the institutions for a country works. That's just power economics 101. Right. Um, but yeah, interesting times for sure. Again, all fourth turning discussions. These are not discussions that even 10 years ago, I think we would have been able to have out in the open without people looking at us like, what in the fuck is wrong with you two? In the cultural classic uh, cinematic film, My Big Fat Greek Wedding. <laughs> there, I love, I love that movie so much. 
<laughs> the father is very much uh, the Greek father is opposed to his daughter marrying the the white man uh, because they are apples and oranges. But in the end, he comes around and he says, "We are fruit." <laughs> I love it. Back to my original point. I think right now Trump is going to be uh, in for a second term as it stands now, unless something drastically changes and we know that can happen. But be clear, guys, he's not just conning minorities or immigrant kids or Mexicans or Central Americans. He's conning our military. It pisses me off. Look, man, firefighters, firemen, fire, you know, responders, EMTs and military veterans are the people I have the most respect for as far as occupation goes. I think they are so selfless. Um, I, I, I can't say enough good things. It, as an American, right? Son of Mexican immigrants, as an American, a taxpayer, it pisses me off that this guy campaigned on a promise to make someone else pay for the wall and now $3.6 billion dollars um, are getting taken away from daycare, daycare centers for military families and defense department projects. And me, meanwhile, everybody, especially especially the better off amongst us, got a, a great chunky tax cut that, that hasn't done anything for our economy. It's a con game, y'all. Y'all are voting for the con of, game. Yep, some of which had already been, whatever you want to say, appropriated yep. or allocated or whatever. Like this one community on a military base thought they were getting a new middle school and then now, nope. You're not getting a new middle school. And then so that really sucks. And yeah, but you talk to him like I talk to cops. My brother in law is a cop. Like yep. I have conversations with people and they love the man. So it's very interesting times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My brother, my brother in law's brother is an FBI agent. And you can tell <laughs> I can tell by the looks I get when I bring the Trumpster up. Yeah, that's a split department right now. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> half of them love them. Half of them. Uh, not, not, not a fan. Right. I think like a lot of the country. Um, what else we got? I know you wanted to talk about human language patterns. We th th This podcast, because it's been a lot of social commentary, I will have a stock of the week for everyone. I think the timing is absolutely perfect. I think it's setting up for a great trade and a great buy, assuming and hoping that the permitting issues that I think will come to pass here soon are resolved. They're not issues. We're waiting on a permit. We'll talk about that. So I just want to let everybody know I do have a stock of the week for you, which will be my way of making up for all of the social and political commentary today. But I know you wanted to talk human language patterns, Nick. Good. I'll tie it all together nicely. I'll make you feel good. Then you can give them a stock and we'll go on about our day. So um, we just talked about how different we are and a half and half are opposed and the fourth turning and all these changes we're going through. Well, there was some research that caught my eye this week about human language patterns. And you know, when you hear somebody, well, you would know perfectly, Gerardo, because you're fluent in Spanish. When you hear somebody speaking Spanish or Japanese or Korean and you're thinking your, your brain is thinking, man, they're talking so fast, right? Yep. Um, it just seems like they're talking fast. But this research has shown that it's because... Um, they have fewer actual syllables in their language. Like I think the metric was something like English had 11 times more pronounceable syllables than Japanese had. And so they just simply have fewer syllables to choose from in their in their words. And so their speech patterns seem like they're faster. But the point of this research and the interesting thing and the feel good thing that I'll leave you with was that no matter the rate of speech, no matter how many syllables any given language had or, or how fast the tempo of the language which was the information across languages was transmitted at the same rate. Huh. Does that make sense? Does that make sense to you? Yes, that is fascinating. The same rate across languages. And that's it. That's my feel good story of the week. That's interesting. That's interesting. I have one more point about the tax cuts and the deficit and what they're doing to make up for it, but it's not going to make anyone feel good. So maybe I'll remember next week. <laughs> <laughs> there it's, you go stock of the week stock of the week i, I think i know you guess it you, we're it pretty is. much on the same. yeah yeah guess it you know which one i'm talking about i think it's got to be a zarga actually it's not but we can have a zarga oh, as a stock of the week on your end of it no 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 i think i actually think a zarga is a great stock of the week and i think this is, you'll laugh but i think both your stock of the week that you thought was mine which is now yours is very similar in where it's at um life cycle wise as my stock of the week. So let's talk Azarga first and then I'll give you mine. 
Well, nothing really to talk about. Uh, well, I guess there is. We talked earlier about this nuclear uh, working, working group, group thing mm-hmm. making its way towards its deadline in October. And last week or the week before, I think it was, uh, Zarga Uranium, which has the Dewey Burdock project in South Dakota, um, is going through permitting. And it announced that there's three like key things they need. And they just checked off another box. So am I going to remember them off the top of my head? I don't know. There was a South Dakota state thing, like an EPA thing. And then like um, an NRC thing. And so um, they're just checking off those boxes and hopefully here, like by the end of the year, they can get them all checked off and move forward with their project, which just in the back of my mind, it gets me really interested because I'm thinking, hmm, if they're checking off these boxes and this permitting thing could come to fruition, it could line up nicely, not only with the the Trump 232 working group thing, but perhaps just uh, a turnaround in the uranium space in general, which has taken longer than anyone thought. And so the permitting taking longer than anyone thought could turn out to be a positive. It's funny how things work out sometimes. That's all I've just been thinking about is Arga. That would be the perfect storm for that stock. And it lines up beautifully with the one I have in the gold and silver sector. So everybody knows, I just said it in this podcast that I believe we have a pullback here for a good chunk of the rest of this month. I think silver goes back to the $16, $17 level. I think gold could go back as low as 1400 And then I think we get a nasty, wicked turnaround that takes everybody by surprise and it's off to the races. Um, If that happens, that should happen sometime in October, the off to the races part where we go much, much higher than than the current $1,500 gold price that we're at. Well, that would coincide very nicely for when I expect all Medin Minerals to receive approval for their mine in Mexico for their Ixtaca project. I expect that decision to happen within the next 30 to 45 days. The company has a mill that is worth Uh, Give or take about $15 million less than the current market cap. Oh, and by the way, you get a bunch of gold and a bunch of silver. And at $1,500 gold and $18 silver, you get a net present value about four times, three to four times its current market cap. You can plug in the numbers or you can go to their corporate presentation and look at the sensitivity analysis on the gold and silver price and imagine the the market cap um, where it should be, um, judging it by the net present value with much higher gold and silver prices. Anyway, I say all that to say I expect that project to get approved. I expect that because they are bastions of responsibility when it comes to community relations. And if that happens within the next 30 days and it coincides with an epic gold and silver rally, then that stock will be off to the races. So very similar um, life cycle where it's at as a Zarga uranium. I have points on Almaden. Um, one would be, yes, very similar to Azarga and that the discovery was made, you know, back 2009, 2010. And the stock went to, I think, something like five dollars on yep. the back of that. And then un- unfortunately, the precious metals markets were uh, what the precious markets have been. And the stock went well below a dollar Um you know, even, yeah, it was, it's been pretty bad, but um, yeah, so there you go. And now everything could be coming back together nicely. They've got their mill, the permitting is coming. And so very similar to Azarga, but um, the other thing I wanted to say was that it's a 50, 50 gold silver deposit. And so silver has been very interesting lately and it sort of gives you very good exposure to both. People say it's a polymetallic deposit for the purpose of this podcast. I'll leave you with this, folks. It's a bisexual deposit. Equal parts silver and gold. <laughs> <laughs> we are <all> flute. <laughs> Episode 35 of Bizarro World. Thanks for listening, everybody. Mr. Hodge, thank you for your time. Have a great week. Y'all love each other. Be nice to each other. We don't have to agree, but we could disagree civilly. Take care. Anything else to add, Nick? No, I'm good. Have a good weekend. Have a good one, guys.